Mm-hmm. Well, the Bush Creek East wildfire tore through the North Shoe Shop on Friday night. And days later, spot fires are still burning in some areas. Meanwhile, anger uh, it has been whipped up among locals who are defying the evacuation order by staying behind to fight those small fires. Jason Morkington lives at Lee Creek, and we have Jason on the line. Hello, uh, good morning. Thanks for talking to us today. Good morning. Whereabouts have we reached you? Where are you standing uh, right now? Well, I'm not sure I should really say, so I don't get arrested, but yes, I am in Lee Creek right now on site. Mm-hmm. And uh, how are things looking this morning? Very calm. They've been actually, interestingly enough, very calm since about 2 in the morning following that epic firestorm. Has anybody been arrested so far? You said you're worried you're going to get arrested. Well, the threat is there, and I've mostly been on my property, so I technically I believe that's legal. Um, I, I've heard anecdotally, but I do not know if people have been arrested. Okay. What is the situation right now in the North Shoe Shop with the fires? Uh, you mentioned it's looking pretty good. Are there still spot fires burning? There are thousands of spot fires burning. Mm-hmm. That firestorm was an unprecedented event, at least in, in my life. And it showered thousands of spot fires all over the place. And they continue to burn, and locals continue to patrol. And there really isn't enough resources to con- patrol all those areas and all those homes. Mm-hmm. When, you know, we've been hearing so much about spot fires. You're a forester, right? A registered professional forester? Yeah, that's right. I was also a... Um, a member of the local fire department for 10 years, including being in the training officer. And I have a lot of experience fighting wildfires um, over the years as a forester and working with wildfire. Can you describe was, a spot fire for me? I just, we keep hearing about it, but I don't know what, exactly what that means. Oh, well, so a spot fire, often what happens in a big blow up when a fire really gets going, like in the firestorm on Friday night, um, it will shower embers a considerable distance ahead of itself and embers will land and just start a new fire and it won't be particularly big to start but it certainly could turn into something but if it lands near a house it could easily uh, continue on um, through the brush or through the grass and then start getting against flammable material and then burn a house down and that's what we're facing right now and in fact two structures were lost just yesterday from that uh, situation and um, conditions are very calm. There's just not enough resources to be able to have eyes on the ground and see what's happening. So uh, you said two structures were lost yesterday. Can you describe to me what happened? Well, there's lots of stories out there, and it's hard to tell exactly, but I personally saw the one home that burned yesterday, one home, one cabin, um, the day before, and, even, and some locals were working on a hot spot behind it, and the fire department showed up. And there was about seven or eight members in three trucks. And I thought, oh, great, they have this. There's the professionals are here. And so I left to go monitor some other hot spots that we've been paying attention to, uh, my other neighbor's place. And uh, I saw the trucks come down a while later, and I thought, great, they took care of that. And uh, that night, uh, unfortunately, that, that house burned down, and those people no longer have a home. Wow. So those are, those are your local fire department that showed up to help fight that? Yeah, a combination of local and uh, outside departments. When how, you, I know you've got some, um, this is very controversial, and, and it was a controversial decision for you to stay, uh, and some of your neighbours have chosen to do the same thing. In your opinion, I, I know there's been some criticism about BC Wildfire and that they're not putting up uh, enough people to support you. Were they there yesterday on site? Um, the, the SPU crew, crews here, which fall under Wildfire, fire, um, and I, I did not see them, but apparently there was some actual wildland firefighters here. This is a very rural area, so most of the firefighting here is more akin to wildland fire, firefighting. But, of course, it's in the Wui, but the, well, there's a lot of large lots here, so most of the firefighting is being completed um, in just the brush and, and forests around here. Yeah. So when the, the fires are quite ferocious, as you mentioned, probably something that... Uh, uh, I mean, witnessing that for you probably, did it change the way you think about wildfire, even with your own experience? Um, I worked extensively on the fires in 2021 and saw some per- very extreme fire behavior. And so this was even more extreme than that. But you know it's coming when you look at it long enough and you think about it. And the reality is our forests and our climate are no longer aligned. The, the forests have dried out. 
the heat dome has caused a lot of dieback in the forest, a lot of dead dry fuels, and the drought that started last year into the fall and then very little rain this spring has resulted in perfect conditions for extreme fire behavior. So even with firefighters on site yesterday attending that fire, the structures were still lost. Well, unfortunately, the fire departments attended and and did not push the, the embers and the fire back far enough, and, and those structures were lost. So are you critical of the fire team, or do you think that this is just an expectation when there's a, a massive fire like this that there will be some structural loss? It's very clear to me there's just not enough resources. You know, the, I've, I have not consumed any social media at all, working day and night to protect my community and work with all the locals here. But the reality is there's just not enough resources. And somehow we have to come to a point where we recognize that collectively. And we need to gather together and find ways to all work collaboratively and support each other, including using local contractors and and, and locals. And many of the locals and local contractors that are here Mm -hmm. protecting their community are very experienced firefighters Mm -hmm. with lots of years of experience in wildland and structural protection as as they were on uh, fire departments over the years. What's, so st- what's the stopping that from happening, do you think? Sorry to interrupt you. What, what is stopping well, that from happening, I that collaboration that you're talking about? I, I think it's a systems problem. And it's that collaborative effort, is it's difficult to change a system and expand it out. But we really recognized it in 21 when, you know, in, historically, firefighting was done by everybody, you know everybody that was capable and then it became a very professional thing which was really good for a long time but we've gotten to a place now where when the fires blow up like this and Kelowna goes crazy and I've only heard anecdotally I haven't not seen any images or looked at anything but it just becomes way too big but the conditions have been extremely calm it has been no wind for days now and it's very good conditions for fighting fire and it turns out this is my first experience really fighting a serious fire in the wildland urban interface and it turns out compared to wildland firefighting provided you can manage for safety it's really easy to fight fire in yards you've got green lawns and walkways and roads everywhere and you know as soon as it gets to a structure it's a very different thing but if it's just in the yard it's actually a really easy thing to fight if there's no wind and there's been no wind for days how many people would you say you're working together with out there the locals i have i really have no idea that'd be a you know, it's people are put, trying to stay fairly close to home because of the, the, the threat that we're going to be arrested and kicked out of our homes. Hmm. And there's a spot fire. You know, this is very personal for me. My mom lost her house in the firestorm. My sister lost her house. And my dad lost his business in the firestorm. So this is a very serious thing. And there was a spot fire that landed right behind my house. And on Friday night, at uh, after the firestorm, when things started to calm down, we drove carefully up the road to see what had happened and we found the spot fire behind my house and we put it out. And so, you know, we're trying to stay close to home because we need to protect our livelihoods and our homes. All right. I'm going to let you go, Jason. I appreciate you taking time away uh, to talk to us here. Thanks so much for your perspective on this. All right, can I just add one more thing? Sure. Um, I, I, as I said, it's really important that we start thinking a little bit differently about this. And I've heard that, and I have not seen social media, but I've heard that you know, there's this narrative going on that the locals are hindering the effort, and that's really not true. There's tons of collaborative effort going on. There's uh, the locals have set up a pump station to provide water, and the wildfire crews and SPU crews are all using those resources. And there's tons of collaborative effort going on on the ground. So I hope that narrative is not true because it does not line up with what I see on the ground. All right. Well, I appreciate your perspective on this. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, Bye. Jason Morkinton is a registered professional forester, and uh, he lives in Lee Creek full-time.